I assume that you may already be aware of the new AI tool that can turn text prompts into 3D models. It is very popular at the moment, but how quickly can we build a playable character in the game engine from such a model generated entirely from text? And what all is needed? Let's find out. Hello boys and girls, my name is Olli Huttunen. This time I thought I'd introduce you to the process of using a new artificial intelligence tool called Genie, developed by Luma AI. Let's create a 3D character with it and transfer it to Unreal Game Engine as a playable character. Luma AI has built this tool to work in the Discord service, so of course you will need a Discord account for this one. When you manage to get in, you should check these simple instructions from this channel, so you know what kind of a prompt you can request from this AI. After that, you will find several Genie channels here, where you can start generating your own 3D models. To enter the prompt, you should just type slash Genie at the beginning and then simply describe what kind of a 3D model you want to produce. I want to make something fun and crazy character, so I'll write long-legged astronaut rabbit at the beginning. I want it to be in cartoony style, so I type that. And I would like it to be in the right position so that it can be rigged. So I add a T-post term also in. Then in the end I can add the desired text resolution, which I want to be 4K in this case. When I hit the enter, my prompt request starts to process and after surprisingly short moment, Genie is ready and offers me a four 3D model options. I can now open the one that I'm interested in by clicking this number button here. Models will be opened in the separate 3D viewer, where I can rotate the model and watch it more closely. We notice quickly that these models are quite low quality. They can have a weird extra lens and they are not very detailed anyway. But these are just preview versions. If no suitable model is found in the first assortment, we can ask Genie to generate the next four candidates again. Or we can change our prompt to match something that will eventually produce a 3D model that we will like. For example, in this third set I found this Astro Bunny that looks like a potential game character. So I want to continue with this one. I can come back to Discord and ask Zini to refine the fourth option, which is the model where I want to have more detailed textures. The refining function is a bit more difficult to calculate, so my request is transferred to this channel in the queue. And depending on how many processed requests there are already created by other users, the generating can take approximately 20 minutes or more. Sooner or later, Genie will have time to process the refining request and a new, much more accurate and detailed model will become available. By the way, this 3D viewer has the option to edit and check out different kind of material properties. You are able to change roughness and metalness values and see how your model will look if you want to change it to be very reflective or shiny. But these features don't help us now as we have to set them again until we get to the end of this process. So we are ready to download this model, which comes in the GLP format by default. And so that we could continue along the road I planned, we immediately have to convert this file to FBX format. The most convenient way is to do it in Blender. In Blender we can also do other small adjustments to the model if it's needed. 
For example, I like to align and scale the model a little bit so that the origin is at the character's feet level and not in the center of it. I also like to rotate the model 90 degrees so that the green y-axis goes through the character. In this position it will be better aligned when we open it in the next phase. Also, I like to make sure that the texture is saved as a separate image file. GLB models can include the texture inside the model and for the FBX that function is not so clear every time. So it is good to have the generated texture also as a JPEG file if it will be lost in the process. After these minor settings we are ready to export the model into the FBX format and that's all we need to do in the Blender for now. Then the next step is to open software called AccuRig. It is a very effective character rigging application for Windows and it can be downloaded free from the Reallusions website. We start the rigging by dragging the FBX file of our character to the AccuRig. This is a very intuitive application where we will continue to the next step as soon as we have completed the rigging tasks. There are not many steps. At the beginning we determine the center line and then the location of the limbs. By moving joint points we define where the bends and joints of the figure are located. On the left you can see very clear instructions according to which it is easy to place the points. When it comes to the step where it asks how many fingers our character has, we can set the value to zero for this one since this character do not have clear separate fingers in it. And that's it. After a little processing, Agaric has automatically rigged our character and we can immediately see it moving. We can test how the character works on different kind of motion capture files and it is quite satisfying to see it in the live and in a movement. The last thing left in this application is to export the rigged character to the correct format. We press the export button and select the FBX format again and then the Unreal template below it. After this we can then move to the Unreal game engine to create a new project. Let's choose a third person game template and save the project where we want. And as soon as we get this project open we can create a new folder for our character under the content directory. Here we can now drag the FBX file that we rigged in the AccuRig application. The important thing in these import settings is to set the right skeleton that our character obeys in the game environment. And here we choose this older skeleton mannequin model that inherits from the earlier UE4 version. This works best for the characters rigged in Accuric. And from the advanced settings here, it is good to activate these two options. Now we are ready to import the character model in Unreal. In order to make our built rapid character playable, we need to connect its current skeleton structure to an existing UE5 mannequin. We need to go inside the character folder, there to mannequins and animation. And then right click over this default Manny character. In up here where is the retarget animation assets, we found duplicate and retarget animation assets slash blueprints. This opens the window where we can easily retarget the current skeleton system to match skeleton which we brought our rabbit character in. We just need to choose the correct IK retargeter from this menu, which is in this case this one which targets the UE5 to older UE4 Manny. And then we just choose our rabbit character from this menu to be the target. From the folder field we can choose the same folder 
where our rabbit lives so that this tool can place all the retarget movements in the correct place. And now our astronaut rabbit is ready for the game. We just have to replace it in the game character's place, which is the default UE5 mannequin character. And it happens in here. We go inside the third person folder and select blueprints in there. Then we double click this blueprint window open. In here we activate the viewport tab and select this default character. Now on the right side we found this place where we can change the default character. And there we roll the list so that we can found our rabbit. We are almost done. The last setting is to change the animation class to match the APB Manny, which we retargeted our character for. Now we are ready to save the blueprint settings and test how our astronaut rabbit will work as a playable character. We simply just hit this green play button and is the correct word boom or a voila in here. I don't know, but anyway, this funny character which we created from the text prompt in AI is now running and jumping and interacting as a playable character inside the Unreal Engine. What is your opinion about this process? It's funny to think how many automated functions we used to achieve this. There weren't very many steps to accomplish this, so I can well imagine that this whole process can be automated with AI in the future. There is also alternative method to make the rigging part of this tutorial. You can use a similar rigging solution that can be found in the Mixamo service. It works with the same principle and directly in the web browser, so you can rig your character regardless of what operating system you use. I hope this was an inspiring video. If you liked it, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And I'll continue making interesting 3D content. So, until the next time, thanks for watching.